So an arithmetic series is one of my all-time favourite mathematical ideas. You take an arithmetic sequence, like this one, and then you add it all together. This plus this plus this plus this equals this. How would you do it? You can't just put them all into your calculator, it's going to take way too long. There is a very clever way to do this. What you do is write them in a snake pattern, like this. So you write 1, 4, 7, 10, and then all of the numbers, 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 finishing with the last numbers, 151, 148, 145, and 142. And then what you do is add these numbers up. You can see that every pair of numbers gives you the same result, 152, 152, 152, 152. Now all we need to know is how many of these pairs of numbers are there? If I knew which term that was, which number term that was, then I would know how many pairs there were because there would be half that number of pairs. Now you could do that by subbing in the first term and the common difference and rearranging the arithmetic sequence formula, but I'm going to tell you that this is term 50. So if, this, if that's term 50, then we know that there are going to be 50 divided by 2 pairs of numbers here. And this is your arithmetic series formula. Take the first number plus the last number, L, and then multiply that by the number of terms divided by 2, because we've got that many pairs. This will give you the total of the pair. This will give you how many pairs there are. It's fantastic. I love it so much. It's such a clever idea how to add those together. Now, there is a different form of this formula because sometimes you don't know what the last number is, but you can find the last number using the arithmetic sequence formula. So here is our arithmetic sequence formula. And if you want to know the last number, say if you want to know the 50th term, you just sub 50 in here, the first digit here, and the common difference here, and that'll give you the last term. Which means that we can take this and transplant it into our formula here for the letter L. Let's take that formula and put it in for L. So it'll look like that, and then we can group those A's, A plus A is 2A. And we get a nice neat formula that looks like that. So this formula here and this formula here appear on your formula sheet, but they don't appear like that. Instead of using the letter A, they use term 1, and instead of using the letter L, they use term N. So they look more like this. Term 1, term N, and 2 times term 1 in that formula. These are the two formulas. This is just like an intermediary step to see how we got that formula. Why don't we use it? So let's do this one, 2, 7, 12, 15. Find the sum of the first 20 terms. So we're going to use uh, this formula here because I don't know what the last number is. So I can't use Tn. So I'm going to use this formula instead. So sum n, sum 20, because we want to know the sum of the first 20 numbers, is equal to n, 20 numbers, over 2, bracket 2 times the first number. Now the first number is 2 plus n minus 1, so the number of numbers, which is 20, 20 minus 1, which is 19, times the common difference, which is 5. Uh, and make sure you get your brackets right. It's this multiplied by all of that in brackets. I'm just going to do that in one shot. So the sum of the first 20 terms of this sequence is 990. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now, of course, as with all formulas, it doesn't just work one way. You don't just put stuff in here and get this answer. You can know any of these things and then find some unknown. So, for example, I know that the first term is negative 7. I know that the sum of the first 25 terms is 1,625. Calculate the sum of the first 5. So, let's start with this formula here and figure out what we know. We know that S25 is 1,625. 1,625. We know that the number of terms is 25. 25 divided by 2. Bracket. 2 times the first term. 2 times the first term. The first term is negative 7. Plus the number of terms. We know the number of terms was 25. So 25 minus 1 is 24. I'll just do that in one step. 
But what we don't know is the common difference. Make sure we put our brackets in the right spot. Now, we just rearrange that algebra so we can find the, the value of d. So my first step is to multiply by 2, which will give me 3,250. I can also divide by that 25 there, and what I'm left with on this side is negative 14 plus 24d. Now, 3250 divided by 25 is 130. I can now add that 14 to both sides, so plus 14, and I'm left with 24d. And of course, I can divide whatever that is, 144, by 24 to get my common difference. And now I have a common difference of 6. Now the question asked me to calculate S5, so now I can just take all the information that I have, sub it back into this formula with an N of 5, a first term of negative 7, and a common difference of 6, and I'll be able to find S5. So the sum of the first five terms is going to be equal to 5 over 2 times 2 times the first term plus 5 minus 1, which is 4, times the common difference, 6, calculate it. And the answer is 25. Now, 25 seems small for a sum of, but think about what this sequence actually looks like. It starts with negative 7 and has a difference of 6. So it would be negative 7, negative 1, 5, 11, and uh, 17. And you can see there's some negative numbers and there's some positive numbers. They're going to cancel each other out a little bit. And that is, if you add them together, 25. So I've been able to check it because the sum, s to 5, is, is quite small. So that's arithmetic series in a nutshell. There are more things that we can do with it, but it all comes down to manipulating these formulas in some way.